Hey everybody, it's Chris and Jose, and this is part two of a deeper dive into UX, and today we're gonna talk about goals, and so Jose is gonna work on creating the user story, which I'm really interested in, so stick around. Let me try this again. I want you guys to listen to me. Yeah, I design sandwiches. My name is Jose Caballet, and I talk about the business of design. <laughs> the des I talk about a lot of stuff. My name is Chris Doe, and I talk about the business of design. At the center of this operating system, it's about understanding. <clears throat> Jose, can we just tell them what the show title is? I hate you, dude. You are watching The Process. Woo! Woo! <laughs> All right, guys, let's do it. So we're gonna switch over to my machine right now. We're gonna get into goals right away, right? Go to goals That's right goals, away. here's the goals. And this I did, again, early on in the stage here. So on the left side of the screen here, you can see a bunch of the goals. And the way we do it is we ask them what are their marketing goals, their business goals, anything else? Is that efficiency? Like efficiency, like all those kinds of things. Yeah. And so then we, we score them on obtainability and desirability. Obtainability is how easy it is for us to do. And we score from one to 10. If something's really easy to do, requires very little effort, we're gonna score at 10. Desirability is how badly do we want this thing? Again, 110. So if you want something really badly and it's really easy to do, well, that should move up to the top of your list of to-do things. So we've pulled in tighter here on the right side here, and so you can see some of these are relevant to what we're doing, some of it's not. They want to do this Christmas card. It's very important to them. It's very easy. The biannual newsletter. They want to work on their Facebook page, their Twitter page, and print advertising. None of these things seem to be reflective of the website, the website itself, but so keep in mind, this is a prioritization exercise that you did early on in the Correct. engagement to understand what their marketing needs were. Right. So that's okay. How so would you do it? How would you? Well, me I would do this particular exercise just for the website. So what you should just the website do, do? It again? It's like, okay, what are your priorities for the website? Mm. So is it registration? Is it is it what the blog? What you said, which is album. is it new customers or is it? to service existing customers. Oh, okay. Yeah. So in case you didn't watch the other episode, Sang had asked, how do you convince the clients to reduce down the amount of content just to make it more manageable and easier and more impactful? I think running the goal exercise the way you designed it to be done is a great way to look at it because they're gonna throw everything in in a list and then we have to start picking things that are the most important and put our energy, our resources towards those things. Now if you have an infinite budget and an infinite amount of time, you can do it all if you want. You're not gonna wanna do that, but that's how you do it. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get this alignment. So keep in mind that everybody might have different ideas. And by everybody, I mean even the designer. You don't know what content is a priority. One of the people that suffers most in doing web projects is the UX designer or the designer because they're left without like you know flailing in the wind. You have to do the prioritization exercise for content. There's a bunch of names for this in the industry, you know, and user experience. You can you can choose a name. I like to call it customer stories or user stories. What you're doing is that you're building the narrative of what a user did in time, so that you can then meet that user with the features that they need in order to accomplish their goal. How do they find out? Uh, the next thing is how do you engage? How do they engage? Like what is it on the site that is gonna get them excited and interested in it? And to come back, the relationship, and then how do you get them to uh, refer? Meaning to say, hey, you know, you guys should uh, use uh, Oli's or, you know, Chris, you tell everybody about Oli's, you know? I do. That kind of thing. So the way that I've written the story, I've done it in a million ways, but when you wanna do it with the client in the room, I've done it on GoToMeeting, where I just set up a Google Doc like this and said, hey everybody, we're gonna just build a user story and narrative and we're gonna build it around each customer profile. So John, the busy executive, I pull out the profile and I look at it. So I'm reading that and it's not the Holy Spirit that is, you know, Chris claims that I'm just pulling sh stuff out of the Holy Spirit. I'm playing. actually trying to determine those things in context of the website. So the Joe is this guy's actual name. Can you read the, 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 the yeah. needs for him? He wants everything looked after, wants to have a feeling of accomplishment, getting away from sterile environments, reconnect with the natural world. There's an emotional need to get centered and decompressed. He wants to be heard, feel like a kid. Okay, and so and we determined that this guy's already been there. So Joe, um, how does Joe find out about he, all these? He first, uh, came first time as a guest, uh, somebody else brought him. Okay, how are we engaging him to come to the site? Like what's his, why is he coming to the site at this instance right now? Uh, well, as a returning customer, he's returning. Yeah. He's a returning customer, so he's coming back to the site to book, because right. he's not a consistent. He has booker. a trip coming up. He wants to book. Yeah. So he found out uh, a, friend, a friend. Word of mouth, I guess. Invited right. him. 
So now he knows. He signed up for the news. He signed up, signed up for email newsletter when he was there. And you can write it in words. You can type it out as a as a narrative. Well, everybody that books a trip is going to give you their email so that they can, so he doesn't need to sign up, it's automatic. They already already have his email. He's already on it. So those are the two things. A friend took him and he signed up for the email newsletter automatically just because he's already been there. So he has an upcoming vacation, upcoming vacation, upcoming vacation. He's trying to decide what to do. He hasn't decided yet. So he gets an email from Olis, which reminds him, what does the email have in it? Like, tell me the story. What it's a periodic thing. What's happening, uh, they'll, they'll do news updates. They, they might write an article, reflections of the year, those kinds of things. It's like a farmer's almanac. Farmer's... I think that's a pretty good way to say it. Almanac. You know, here's the weather, here's what's been happening, here's a new employee. It's like a very, like, you know, a lot of things about it. Does that make sense? Yeah. For the newsletter? I'm looking at these decisions based on who the guy is on what the heck is he going to read. He already talked a lot about, and this is based on a real customer. You yes. were there. You are a customer. You've been there. I know You've the customers. This. You know the customers. You could also base it on interviews that you do with the customers. All right, so he clicks on book a trip, and he gets to the site. What does he see when he gets to the site that's going to engage him? Why is this particular user going to be engaged? He's a CFO. He's quantitative. He, he, he's, what is his personality I, I think he, because he's been there before, he's going to want to remember how good it was, and that's, that might get him to engage again. So seeing photos, hearing about the stories, because fishermen love to tell stories. Okay. So right. stories you think might yeah. engage him? Um, you got to just rechar- rekindle that experience for him, because you know time com- goes on, and, and you get distracted in life, and you don't remember. So when I see pictures of nature and people fishing and catching big fish, it's like, I want to be there. Let's say that this is the first time he's come to the site, the okay. new site. The new site. He's new been site. to the old okay. site. Yeah. So this is the first time. What do we want him to do on the new site? We oh. want him to register. We want to get him to register, right? Okay, I see. Um, so uh, maybe I'm making this up. Sure. When you go, you know how they take a picture of you? Like with the fish, yeah. et cetera? Every time you go, they put it up on the, on the website in the members only section. Or you have a module which is called user self identification where the user can self-identify as a returning customer. So new to the site, rec- returning yeah. customer. It's a new site, but the trigger for registration is going to be see pictures, register, see pictures. That's what, why did I decide that? Because he just told me that this guy, is, like, the story might be the one thing that's gonna convince him. Great, so he registers, and that's in the story. He registers to see the picture and lands on a hello, would they say hello, like in their brand? Like this is where you go back and you look yeah. at the brand attributes. It's hello. Would it say howdy? Would it say, it hello? say welcome would it say to Oli's? Welcome, welcome to Oli's. Uh, or welcome home. Welcome, welcome home, Joe. That's how they say. Welcome home, Joe. Okay, so now I know what that page that I'm going to be designing looks like. Now it's a story page, so basically it's a bunch of images of other people's trips. So general stories. What? What call to action is going to be surrounding the general stories? Where is the navigation going to have, you know, what's going to be the most important thing on the, on the site? A schedule, so he could plan his vacation. So plan. 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 Trip plan. plan is better than okay. book. We're not ready to book yet. He book sees scary. a plan your trip, plan your trip link. He goes to that, he looks at the dates, and he's really excited. Those are the dates for his vacation. He books. And now you can describe the booking process. You can use the standard kind of process as it is, you know, from others. You can do a lot of ways of doing it. I guarantee you, there's probably already uh, con- companies that provide all the infrastructure that you need for a resort off the shelf that you can actually. I have do. a thought. Yeah. Plan and book. It's too fast. I think we need a scaffold. Plan and reserve or hold. So okay. You can hold the dates, and you can call your buddies, everybody. So you kind of, and that also gives. Oli is an opportunity to see it intent. Okay, so then they can. I like that. And then he comes them. back to. And then to he book. can book. Yeah. You know, so plan, plan, hold, and then book. People do not go fishing rarely by themselves. You go out on this boat. You're out in the ocean. Mm. You don't want to be in a boat by yourself. There's one guy that I know from the entire group. He likes to go by himself. 
So you got to you usually do it with two or three people. So that makes the whole booking and planning coordination is a lot more complicated, right? Because I want to go, but I need to find a partner to go with. And so this is the challenge of places like this. So here's another part of that story. So I love that. So what if he actually gets to send the itinerary to his buddy? So you can send the itinerary to a friend or family friends. member to multiple friends. So that's a feature that we need to figure out. His friend, friends, two friends email back. And these are families, so they might bring more than one person. One can't make it, one can. Only one can make it. So with spouses, that's four. Four people? Do they bring their spouses or no? Is this just buddies? Is this the guys? No, 50-50 to bring their spouse. Okay. So let's say these guys, one brought a spouse and 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 a and, a, and their kid, you know, an Sometimes older kid. Sometimes they do that. And then Even the other one kids. just came. He's they they didn't bring their kids because their kids are too old. They have their own lives. Right. All right. So that's how many people? That's five. So five people. So now he books. Uh, so I have an idea. For five. So when you invite your friend, I think it'd be good to make it feel like very postcard, like, hey, because yeah. you kind of have to say, don't we want to do this? Yeah. So it can't just be a generic, here's a date. You got to sell the friend, the spouse, the cousin, the, the kid in college, let's go do this thing again. You can write that into the narrative. Right? You can write into the narrative, make it like paperless post. Because you have to convince people to go with you. I hope this isn't getting off topic too much, but you can it's always interesting. Get off topic. Like, I feel like this actually opens big door for the idea of group trip planning. Like so so it's, it's, it's planning trips together. The idea so of an invitation yeah. sounds really cool. But the so idea of an invitation and a group calendar so you can see everybody's availability dates at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that, that goes deeper into yeah. right. much more f uh, functionality. Now, what you want to do if you note that is to make a note of it and then to look at competitors and how deep they go into the booking process. Because here's the challenge in software, that's a great idea. The question becomes how much of that effort, cost-wise, is going to return actually new customers. So if they're making a leap from not having had a website for a long time to having a website, how far do you go into all this new technology that you want to build for them? The reason why there's that diagram where all of the stakeholders should be in the room, who's missing in the room right now? The Even developer. The developer. So we're coming up with all these novel ideas as you know, creatives, as designers, and then we So Rick Shop should be a, uh, guys, that's a $30,000 build. We put a pin on that as an idea. So just to finish the, the, the whole concept, now it's the return. What you said actually would make people really come back. It, it's a viral, what's called a viral loop, meaning if I invite, hey, Chris, I'm going fishing, and I invite three buddies, you know, can you guys make it? Then they might actually go invite more people. Ah, that's great. New feature. Yeah. A Facebook post for you to say, who wants to go fishing with me? And it, it'll just put it on your timeline. That's a little different than this kind of custom invitation email. But this, when you said the word viral loop, I, then I'm thinking that's going to solve one of their goals, which is to be more present on Facebook and Twitter. So throwing that out there on Facebook with a nice little picture, mm -hmm. that would be pretty cool. I don't think anybody's even doing that in this space at all. So one thing, to, 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 especially for our audience, if you're watching this, we can do this session without any limits and say, let's, you know, the sky's the limit, let's do as much as we want to do, and then take all of the features that come out of it, and you, what's called a, a, a feature matrix, and you do you know, an exercise where you prioritize those based on cost, complexity, and, uh, and necessity. So the, the final part that we want to do is how to get people to come back to the site. So he already, he sent it to a friend, he, his friends emailed him back, he booked for five people. Does he pay online, you know? You, you can, but no, they, they'll send him forms. Most that, people, yeah. They put a deposit you check down, person, something right? like that, yeah. Do we want to change Human that being. in the site? Do we want, want to be able no, to No, it's online? still a highly personalized experience. I, I don't think it needs to be it's all. A, it's, it's, it's cost, it's not like, this is not a sandals vacation. This, no, this is 24 little, people at a time per trip. Two or four? 24. Oh, you that, have to book with two No, no, they're a capacity at 24 people, so this is a high personal service thing. Okay, so this five people is, 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 is one group. Well, that's, that's a good group. And, and it, but I'm just saying, it's not, a, it's, not, it's not that cheap is what I'm saying. It's this not cheap. Not like, you know, 500 bucks per person. No. This is going to be, you know. 3,000. Okay, got it. Great. Per person. So, so that's already a $15,000 investment, so it makes sense to hand it off to somebody. You don't mm -hmm. want to, so we don't necessarily need to have booking online. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. 
but you are registered and you can manage. I like your idea of managing your trip online. So now that you're registered, it has all the people that are coming. So what other things can we do to make people come back? Like what are the things that we can set up now, customer service wise? You can download the forms maybe. Like what is it that, that, that the site's gonna do? How's it gonna make the experience more efficient? Well, typically what happens is once you book the trip or you're engaged in that, Joan will send you the forms and have you fill out information so that they can get your fishing license and all that stuff ready. And she'll okay. start to send you so the welcome package. Welcome package, I like that. Welcome package from Joan. Yep. Comes in email. So we can automate that process. And it can be an email from Joan saying, Welcome, Joe. We, we're happy to see you back. Maybe the email even knows automatically as a return customer. She That's knows. It's all pre written. And she didn't actually have to write it. And the, currently, she is writing a real email, sending them the welcome package. We can now automate that. Um, so it comes in an email uh, with the forms, forms to fill out. Great. So maybe if he's a repeat customer, which he is in this case, yeah. the form should already be pre-filled with this information. Whoa. And just say, can we make the forms online just for of that? Of course. Idea? All right. Why not? So this he is already Sky, has a right? profile because he's already a customer. Yeah. Uh, uh, Joe uh, comes in an email with a link to forms. Everything's already filled out. To his just tell us form. what's changed. That's all. So sometimes Joe's. dietary needs change. For example. Uh, Joe's getting up there in years, and he may be diabetic or pre-diabetic or something like that. So he needs very specific food this time around. Other than that, I don't think that much changes. Maybe an address, a phone number, or something. So Joe's profile is filled with past information. That's going to make him feel great. What comes next after we finish his customer story? The final part is how he. Uh, this is how he shares. You know, he shared it on Facebook, even though I don't think Joe would be on Facebook. But it's a feature. It's oh, he does it for him. That's why. Huh? Oh, you're saying he needs to even have a Facebook account? He might not account. be on. Uh, That's fine. He's not a Facebook guy. Right. But he already shared with others because he invited people. Sure. Um, and uh, let's see a way Joe would be willing to share. He can email, you know, his story or a story or, he or can an pick. article. He can do it different ways. But but let's say that Joe's profile is filled out with past information. He updates it with new dietary, new dietary, new diet, with new diet. So so. What do you th let's reflect on this. What do you guys think of this? Is I'm designing the site right now, except I'm doing it in, in well, a in Why don't you form. talk to engage with the yeah. people? I'm going to highlight some things, right? So, this is how he finds out, yeah. just to kind of overview because it's hard to figure out how he engages. Get out of the way there. What's the third one, Jose? Uh, so, the find third out. One engage. Is actually, uh, return. So, this okay. is where he returns to the site. Okay. Yeah. And then the final one is um, refer to a friend, which is the Facebook thing, or. Um, so you're going to want to know for each user story, how they find out, how they engage, how they return, and then is that yeah. it? Yeah, and you can change these around a little bit. I mean, but the idea is that it's the customer journey. I mean, some journeys are going to be different. You're putting your feet into or your hands into a lot of aspects of the business, and you're facilitating that and coming up with these stories, which then become you know, a sitemap, which is the next thing we're going to do, and then wireframes. Based on these, and you can then tell the same story with those wireframes. And I'm going to tell you in the next episode how to do that. So you guys have any questions about what we just did, what, what you thought was helpful, or anything like that? I have a question. Uh, so we did this exercise based on Joe's profile. And what if, uh, let's say, Phil, the demanding networker, he doesn't want anything up on his Facebook? Or what if there's a conflict Noted. between them? So first of all, this is only one. Huh? You have to do all of them. So okay. your, your job. For every user type, yeah. you do a user story. For your job is to, <laughs> in the whiteboard in the conference room B, is to go actually do the rest of them. Your real question is, once you have these different user stories built, mm -hmm. how do you resolve the conflict that may exist? Yeah. It's a great question. So then you get into the different narratives or the different paths. Keep in mind, it's a website. You don't have to do everything. Like you have you know, this here, this here, and not everything is available for everybody. It's a nonlinear experience. It's a nonlinear experience. Which, by the way, that is the most complex part of doing web design, is that it's completely nonlinear. If you try to like, control it too much, it's too difficult. And the reason why all these exercises exist, even why the school exists, is to teach all these things that require you to flow, like Bruce Lee, you know, like, Whoa. Jamie, anything from you? Did you like this? Did yeah, you think this yeah, was helpful? Yeah, I think it was really exciting seeing this more personal side of the website. Where else in the process would you want to talk about new features and 
the goal is to simplify a really complex site. How do you make sure that you don't end up with feature bloat? Feature bloat. That's bloat. a really great question. Good and question. I'll, I'll try to answer it as concisely <laughs> as possible. And that might be a miracle of God. <laughs> um, I would recommend that you do a discovery phase during which you have a technical person or yourself determine what their goals are from a technology standpoint and what their budget is from a technology standpoint in general. Okay. And based on that, then you can either restrain yourself when you're doing the brainstorming because you already came with a restraint, or you can say, forget it. We're going to go the sky's the limit and then scope out what you did and cut out what you can't do. Okay. Well done. Bravo. <laughs> Booyah. Ten seconds. All right. So that was super helpful for me. I just want to let you know I've never seen Jose do this before. And seeing you do that, it gave me a whole new perspective about how to approach a site instead of just doing the site taxonomy and to kind of reskinning it and reorganizing the, the, the chairs on the Titanic, if you will. That ship will still crash. I like that this is going to make the site much more functional and it's really going to help them do what they need to do, which is to get more people to book. So we're really solving the user's problem. And this is the brilliance of what you just did. So bravo. Thank you, thank you. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We have more to go. So stick around. And Not stick around. I'm sorry. See you next time. Comment below. Like this video if you like it. And please subscribe. Just keep on watching. Watch the other videos. They're Here really, I go. They're really good. Good job, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs>